questions from the floor, please keep it to a question. I'm going to limit you to one minute. And the way we're going to work it is we're going to have um, a varying order for answering those questions. So the first question, please. Okay, you in there. Uh, my name is Simon Hester. I'm involved in the Trades Council. I think we can probably all agree, I hope we'd all agree, that David Lammy over the last 48 hours has done a very good job in defending the Windrush generation from the attacks on the Tories. He's gone further today and demanded the resignation of Amber Rudd, which is a good move in my opinion. <laughs> uh, and what's even better than that is that he's put the, the attack on the Windrush generation in the context of Theresa May's hostile environment for migrants, which she put through four or five years ago as Home Secretary. So the pressure is on her now, um, because what's ha what that did was it meant the GPs, the NHS, schools, landlords, Virtually everyone became a, an immigration official, checking on people's immigration status. That's also affected Harringay Council. Uh, and there are all, uh, already Home Office uh, officials seconded to work for Harringay Council, picking up on vulnerable people. So if you're elected, would you be prepared to defy Theresa May's hostile environment by, refute, by allowing uh, public sector workers to not check people's immigration status? And would you, would you kick out any Home Office officials now seconded to work for Harrington Council? Okay. We're going to have, the order is going to be Nick, Jarrell, MNA, and Viv. And you have two minutes to answer. Uh, well, uh, recently, in, in terms of the uh, Windrush generation and the uh, concessions that have been forced from the government, I think uh, uh, the role that Philip Lammy played in that was, was very good. Uh, sorry, David Lammy. It was very good. Uh, I'm afraid uh, I, 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 couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't say that I think that he's played a particularly good role in relation to other aspects of policy, in, in particular in relation to uh, the stance on, on Corbyn. But uh, I'm also a member of Unite. Uh, I'm also a member of the, uh, the Housing Workers Division. And uh, we, we've had to tackle this issue as well. Um, we've opposed this consistently. So we've actually made uh, representation to, uh, to the Home Office and to local authorities uh, and we've, we've highlighted the fact that homelessness workers were unwittingly one minute. One minute, were um, unfortunately placed in that position themselves of being, of being policemen and it's not the role of trade unionists to act as policemen for the Home Office. If they want to do that, that's something that they have to do and, uh, or that they choose to do. We would oppose that but we would certainly uh, protect and support trade unionists that refused to implement those measures, but not just support them in words. It's a question of building a campaign across the trade union movement, exposing what's happening and the fact that uh, housing workers and other workers that work for local authorities are forced to take on this role. So yes, I think it's wrong, I think it should be opposed, I think it's a way of dividing workers and I think we should all oppose that and we should say no. Yeah, I'm um, absolutely I'm quite horrified at the situation that Caribbean uh, people find themselves in. My dad being one of those from Jamaica, uh, my mum's side's from Antigua, so it, you know it's kind of affected me. I've been speaking to dad recently about that. But you know, this hostile environment has been here for a while now, unfortunately, for a very, very long time. And I have to say, even Ed Miliband's Labour brought out the immigration mugs um, when he was campaigning, saying that they were going to control immigration. And there's this, been this argument against immigrants for a very, very long time. And this is the fruits of it. Um, the seeds have been planted for a long time, and this is, we're now seeing what happens when you allow that to fester. What happens when you allow people to uh, denigrate immigrants of all kinds? Um, and uh, you know, we recently go into war, and we haven't we, we haven't taken any refugees. So this is the kind of environment we live in. And the Green Party, I'm proud to say, has opposed all of this for a very long time. Caroline Lucas was one of the people pushing uh, with David Lammy actually um, against uh, for the Windrush generation. Um, and we have to make sure that 
from now on going forward that we all collectively as parties and as individuals nip this in the bud. Um, Theresa May stood in front of billboards uh, asking people to go home and I remember her also spending taxpayers money to force a Nigerian woman who was ill um, to fight against her getting uh, a kidney from a relative in Nigeria. That's the kind of country we're living in now. We're living in the country that my nan told me about from the 60s. No blacks, no Irish, no dogs. And with the EU and what they're doing to Irish people as well, that's the situation we're in. It's real and it's stark and we must oppose it and the Green Party oppose it and I certainly do as well. So um, I'm going to start by, ask, um, start by answering the last um, uh, point in, 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 your, in your question, um, Simon, because I think that's a really important issue. It's about what we will do. And um, what you spoke about in terms of, of council staff and um, a homelessness provision, I think that, that really hits home for me because um, where I've been a councillor for the last four years, we've and I can see Councillor Brabazon is here as well, we've been met with many challenges in terms of street homelessness under the bridge in um, Haringey Ward and um, also the Finsbury Park Bridge <coughs> falls within our ward as well. And um, we, um, we, we, we have been told that um, uh, that um, officers and, 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 and local police um, are um, kind of looking at the fact that if somebody is an EU national, if they're not exercising their treaty rights, therefore that is when they can swoop in and see it as a way of dealing with the issue. We challenge that consistently. And um, if I find myself in any position of influence um, on, 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 on May the 4th, I will stick to that. I do not think it is the role of local authorities to be doing that or to be participating in that. So the answer to that is 100% completely agree with you and I think it's really really important in the current context of what's happening with the uh, with the Windrush generation particularly as um, you know we've got um, um, you know big um, Caribbean community in Haringey but actually that really hit home for me um, because my mum came here in 1973 she fled the conflict in Cyprus she only has indefinite leave to remain in the UK since Cyprus has left the European, well, Cyprus, sorry, Britain is leaving the European Union, um, her situation could end up being that she no longer has her documentation. She will have to go through a long process. She did not think 45 years later she would have to be in a position where she needs to prove her right to live in the UK, and it's devastating. <laughs> Um, I'm not a fan of David Lammy, um, but um, I watched his speech yesterday in the House of Commons where he harangued Amber, Amber Rudd, and I thought it was one of the most powerful speeches um, that I've ever seen. Um, I was really impressed. Um, Jarrell took one of my lines. I was going to uh, say that I can remember a time when uh, there were signs up outside uh, rented accommodation saying no blacks, no dogs and no Irish. And I was appalled then, and I'm appalled now, um, at some of the things that are going on um, with, um, in the government about how they, uh, they are using the way that the, um, the referendum results and the um, UKIP and other sort of very right-wing parties are, um, have um, allowed uh, racism and um, given a sort of a, a situation where the government thinks it's OK to say to people who may have lived here since they were five years old um, and came over um, uh, from the Caribbean um, and maybe didn't need to get a passport, maybe didn't need to get a driving licence or whatever, and so now, 40, 50, 60 years later, can't prove that they're a citizen of this country. And I don't think, I've never thought you have to prove that you're a citizen of this country. If you're paying your taxes, and you're keeping on the right side of the law, you have every right, and that goes along for refugees as well. Um, if, you're, if you um, are paying your taxes and you're doing the right thing, you have every right to live in this country, and I support most of what, everything that uh, all the other uh, people have said here tonight. Thank you. Okay, the next question, I saw a guy there. If, you've got a, if you need to ask a question, put your hand up and I'll make a list. Hi, my name is Paul Byrne. I want to ask a question about... 
forced gentrification and social cleansing, uh, which has been a major issue in this borough. The borough council, uh, which, which you're, you're standing to be, to, be, to be members of, has got 17 estates at the present time at risk, risk of demolition. Guess what? They're council estates and they're housing association estates. And so the question I've got for you is that when you say that you want to, uh, to, to regenerate parts of the borough, doesn't that mean a mass demolition of council housing? And if so, why would you want to do that? Now, it may be, it may be that the relevant paragraph of the Labour Manifesto is actually there because it was written by Claire Cobra and can be disregarded. I'd love that to be confirmed if, if, if that is the case. But let's just, let me just finish by mentioning Claire Cobra and Alan Strickland. Bad, negative, destructive, hypocritical, lying, and, and they are departing. I'm pleased they're going. I'm pleased there's a new leadership in the Labour Party stepping, stepping up to the plate. What I'll say about uh, Alan, Alan Strickland and Claire Cobra is this. They never did, I'll give you a number of estates. You ask your question. They never demolished in this borough. Zero. They demolished nothing. They talked a lot, but they were failures. Okay. Thank you. I, I, um, I think that was all about the HDB. Uh, the HDB was not in the Labour Party manifesto last time round. Um, it, uh, it appeared uh, out of the ether about three years ago um, and took a, an awful lot of digging uh, by the opposition, the Liberal Democrat opposition on the council then to find out what was going on and as more and more facts came out about um, social cleansing I think was mentioned and a demolition of um, housing across the borough, um, more and more people um, realised that this was just not the way to, to regenerate um, and to deal with the housing crisis in Harringay. It's, um, it, we, we, um, we took the view, um, and we do still, that there are better ways of, uh, of regenerating the housing in uh, Haringey than putting all your eggs in one basket, two billion pounds worth of uh, housing scheme um, in bed with a 50-50 um, deal with a slightly dubious uh, property company, Lendlease, um, and we took the view that it was just not the way to do things, uh, too, too many eggs in one basket. Um, so we have opposed uh, the regeneration um, system, the regeneration scheme set up by the current Labour administration, led by Claire Cobra. Um, and we, as soon as we found out, or as soon as we realised what was going on, we opposed it uh, to the best of our ability in the council. Thank you. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm going to have to challenge you on this. Um, if you look at when the original decision was made um, to progress with the procurement exercise on the Haringey Development Vehicle at Cabinet, the Liberal Democrats did not oppose it. it um, they had the opportunity to turn up at the um, Cabinet and ask questions. They were part of nodding it through. Um, the Housing and Regeneration Scrutiny Panel, which I chaired, and um, along with my um, Labour colleagues, which included the, um, um, a, a couple of Liberal Democrats, I, I, I grant that, um, actually did a lot of work. Um, and we, we did what was the classic role of scrutiny, which was to look at what was being proposed and to provide challenge and to, to analyse what was initially quite a, 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 a vague proposal on what was, what, what was being planned. But I think actually what we, what we, need, to, what we need to understand here is that, um, the, you know, and, and I'll use this phrase, the triangle is broken. You know, Jeremy Corbyn has proven that there is no there is no possible way which we can present some kind of argument that um, you can actually um, deliver this type of, of, of regeneration in a 50-50 partnership um, 
with um, what is essentially private capital with private profit interests. And that was our role as the scrutiny panel to, to, to look at that because we, we saw, and we saw as a committee, that it was a fundamentally um, flawed process in, in the fact that there'd been very, very little consultation. And I'm, I'm really, really um, kind of... Um, you know, really in awe of, of some of my Labour colleagues in terms of their support on this issue and the local community in 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 terms of what was what was um, you know kind of um, you know a, 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 a local campaign. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, as mentioned in my um, opening monologue, HDV was um, a very very bad idea from the start so I'm not really sure how it started but uh, and I also said we understand that there are challenges um, in this market to build truly affordable housing um, and we support um, refurbishment more than uh, regeneration because regeneration generally means demolishing um, knocking down houses moving people out and that's what it will mean it will price out um, the low-income people who are disproportionately the BM, BME community as well. Um, and we know that. Um, we, we've got the blueprint from other boroughs who did similar things, Labour councils actually in similar things in Lambeth. Um, and to choose Len Lease out of all the, the people they were supposedly negotiating with was a very peculiar decision. Um, they have a history of failure um, and it was going to be disastrous for this borough and we'd be paying for it until... I don't know, until someone comes home. Anyway, so what would we do as a Green Party? We support things like there is a, a community land trust called Start, hoping to build social housing on the site of the St Anne's Hospital. Um, that has had community consultation from the outset. That is the kind of thing we would introduce as a Green Party. Refurbishment, um, as I said, Claire Cobra stood up in her last meeting um, and had the temerity to talk about and people's dams and broken windows and broken lights and lifts not working and that is their legacy that is Labour's legacy in this borough um, and they are allowed to get away with it because they are on the majority council and we need a vocal opposition and that's what we will be as a Green Party we won't be running the council we will be holding them to account and they've had no one to hold them to account um, and that's what you will get if you vote for the Green Party in the next election thank you, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, thanks for Paul's question. Um, he kind of answered it as well, and uh, I uh, agree with the answer that he put. Uh, we're not in favour of uh, destroying homes. We're in favour of building homes. Um, we're not in favour of using dodgy contractors. We want to make sure that we use public firms um, and well-paid well trade unionist labour for the building of those houses. In the uh, Labour leaflet, I notice it makes a commitment to build a thousand new council homes at council rents by 2022. And I think that's a welcome development. But it's nowhere near enough. The last figures I saw, there were approximately 9,000 people on the homeless register in Haringey alone. That's one person in 28 in this borough, let alone all of those people who are living in shoddy, uh, poor quality accommodation. Now, this council must really go to war on poor housing. It must say no to the dodgy dealers, no to privatisation, and it should be building homes, but it should be building more than the commitment of a thousand council homes by 2022. However welcome that is, that's only going to provide a small dent. And as uh, Jeremy Corbyn made the point, in fact his election to become leader and his defence to, to retain the leadership of the Labour Party was largely based around this issue and it was a very popular demand. And he made the point that council house building must be at the heart of a campaign to provide mass housing and, and I agree with that. You see these, these towers going up all over London. Uh, and you can, most, most, for most of us, you can look, but that's all you can do. 
We should be taking over these places and housing the homeless. Okay, the next question. Uh, seen, uh, lady from the floor, obviously a unison oh. care worker. Okay, good evening. Um, as you see, we are all carers working in the bar of Aringay, and we would like to know when will carers in Aringay finally get a London living wages? When? Not 2022, we'd like to know now. When are we going to get the London living wages? Okay, the answer is going to be, it's going to be M&A, Viv, Nick, and then Jarrell. Um, so thank you, thank you for coming. And um, uh, obviously, I, I did say earlier, I'm a um, trade union, I'm, a, I'm a, a, a Unison branch secretary in Redbridge, so I completely support your campaign here. And I, I just think what Unison has done in Haringey in, in, in terms of campaigning for care workers is so important nationally, actually. And um, uh, the, the, our, our Labour Party manifesto has we've, we've signed the ethical care charter in Haringey and our Labour Party manifesto um, commits to um, the London living wage um, in the next administration will I be able to give you a specific date for that I think that would be that would be wrong um, but I but, but, but I think it's really important that because we've committed to it that we stick to that commitment and that it's a fully costed approach because the important thing is that that, um, contra um, you know some of the things that I spoke about earlier in terms of zero hours contracts. You know, let's not forget that you 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 guys don't just work for the borough or are contracted into the borough. You many of you will, will be living in the borough, so you know we, we can't put people in in, in boxes. And you know, th th this is this is something about workers, and this is something about residents. Actually, that 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 is the key to our local economy is to make sure that people are paid properly. Uh, okay. I also, I don't think um, I can answer your question, when will you get a um, London living wage, but I think that anyone who um, works in uh, any uh, industry, any situation who's living in London should be paid um, the minimum that is legally required. Uh, so I know, it's, I know that's the minimum wage. I meant, I meant in London. I meant in London. Um, it's it's one of those things that um, I mean. My brother um, was uh, uh, um, it wasn't a care worker, but he looked after my mum uh, for a long time, and um, and I think that the people who are in that sort of uh, caring situation should be paid properly, and that includes people who work for the council, but it also includes, I think, people who are um, maybe have to look after a, a loved one um, and, um, and are not uh, receiving a wage for that, even though if that loved one went into some sort of care home, um, they, they would, someone, the council, would have to pay someone to look after that loved one. Um, so as I say, I can't answer your question, um, but certainly I think the Liberal Democrats have a... Um, uh, uh, have a, a reputation of, of wanting to look after people who are the lower paid. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, strangely, I find myself agreeing with the Lib Dems. Uh, he started off by saying he couldn't answer the question, and I think he proved that. Um, the question was, when are you going to expect to be paid the London living wage? And he wasn't prepared to make a commitment. Uh, and I think that, 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 that is shameful. We're talking about a wage of £10.20 in London. And I also think it's wrong and it's shameful for the Labour Party to promise that they will pay that wage, but in fact delay it for four years. What's going to happen in those four years? Will, will the rents not go up for four years? Will the bills not go up for four years? Will the council tax not go up for four years? No, they'll all go up. So I should say, the real answer to your question is when you, you should have had it already. 
That's the truth. You should have had it already. But if not, I'd expect, I'd expect the council on May the 4th to make this an absolute priority. What an inspiration it would be to low paid workers throughout the borough and beyond if we had a Labour leader getting up on May the 4th guaranteeing that they were paying the care workers a minimum of the London living wage and it must be the bare minimum. But also, although I think you're entitled to it in Haringey, that there are other workers in other boroughs, they should be entitled to the same thing. And if your trade union leaders were to commit to, to, to having a campaign on that issue, then I'm sure that we can force some of these councils and the sympathetic ones, hopefully we can persuade them to give you that rise that you absolutely need and deserve as soon after the 4th of May as possible. Maybe you'll have to wait to the 5th or the 6th, but you can certainly rely on the support of Tusk and we'll be behind you 100%. And if the council don't give it, we look forward to lobbying the council with you. So, um, firstly, thank you for all your all, all your hard work. Um, you do a great job, and you really are valued in this borough. Um, and I was saying earlier that the uh, cuts to social services and other things around this borough, we wouldn't have implemented those. And it is Green Party policy um, for trade unions. We were against the Tories Trade Union Act, and we would go into workplaces which don't have organised trade unions and force them to look at their workers' situation and pay is one of them. I mean, as the Tusk man mentioned, £10.20 an hour is not a lot of money in London at all. Um, and Labour should really, really fully commit to that. And I was disappointed in the insipid response from Labour in this situation. I think that uh, you should have had this a long time ago. And the Green Party, as I said, we will be a vocal opposition and holding Labour to account. So I can assure you, if I do get a seat on this council, I will be fighting for every single worker um, in Haringey, even if it's, if it's, their, if it's their, our own workers or if we outsource it. That's the other thing. If you outsource this work to private companies, you should be ensuring the contracts you sign say that workers get a minimum wage of £10, the London minimum wage. And this council haven't done that, unfortunately. So there are a lot of workers in private, working for private companies and Labour are saying, well, it's nothing to do with us. Um, you know? But you've signed that contract and any... any, any pardon? No, no, we're not no we don't, well, 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 this is what I'm saying, you know, it's, it's very easy. Well, it's very easy to come and, and speak now, but these people are not getting the, the London Living Obviously, Wage, and that's the point. And so, yeah, I'm finishing my point, but I'm saying, it, you know, it's, no, you don't need to attack me here. It's, it's, it's uncalled for. These people are asking for a minimum wage. Um, no, no, it's it's a, uh, he should, have, he should have more well, time well, well, to answer because she's constantly interrupting yeah, yeah. him and he should have more time. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, I mean, you should have your London living wage, um, and that's the end of that. And I would fight for you to get that, um, and the Green Party will fight for you to get that. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The next question is from the lady in blue, and the order is going to be Jarrell, Nick, Viv, and then Emine. Uh, one of the um, major ways in which workers have suffered in Haringey is by losing their jobs because of the closure of public institutions. And I want to just say a few words of, uh, about that and to, to ask a question. There have been quite large-scale redundancies because of the closures of adult social care institutions and services since 2010. But since 2014, there's been the closure of three day centres for people with learning disabilities and autism, and two day centres for people with, um, with frailty and with dementia. Now that's under the current Labour Council, it affects people that I represent who are people in adult social care, the families, the residents, the service users, but of course it directly affects the workers because we are losing good skilled workers who are actually no longer work in, in, in this borough. So what I want to ask the, uh, uh, the panel is, what will you do to restore day provision in this borough to people who previously 
were able to get care in this borough and now are having to go outside a borough to placements where we learnt last night, and Nick referred to this, to placements which are regularly breaking down because they cannot cope with the, the, uh, the, the, the service users who are being transferred out. So I would like a commitment from each of the candidates to restore provision, but, and in particular, provision for those people who've got very complex needs and high support needs. Yeah, as I've mentioned a few times tonight, it is part of our manifesto um, to reverse the cuts to social care um, and reverse the cuts that we've had to youth services as well. We value both um, greatly, and it, I wasn't at the hustings last night, but um, another Green candidate was there, and he was um, telling me some horrific tales of people um, really crying actually about the, the cuts that's happened to them and how it's affected their lives on a day-to-day -day basis um, and it is harrowing. So we would be committed to holding the council to account to make sure that we reverse these cuts because they're vitally important uh, for the fabric of Haringey in our society. Um, you know, it's, it's very difficult for us to give you figures and so on and so forth because it, we won't be running the council. Um, so it really is up to Labour to be committed to this as well. Um, but we will be fighting with you um, to make sure that people have the right care and provision because it is essential. Thanks very much. Well, um, yes, I, I, I um, welcome the question and I agree with the answers. Uh, I tried to make it clear last night uh, so thank you for the opportunity for allowing me to make it clear again. Um, last night in the debate that took place, the Labour candidate made the point that they thought that most of the Labour candidates at least uh, really did not agree with the closures of these centres. That may well be true. And she said, all you've got to do is read between the lines. Well, it's not good enough. Our leaflet, and I hope you've all got a copy, you don't need to read between the lines. Read the lines. It's here very clearly. Restore provision for those with autism, learning disabilities, and dementia to support local families, service users, and carers. So in answer to your question, then yes, we would reopen those centres, just as we would reopen the youth centres that have been closed. Because this is... Not a luxury, this is an absolute priority. And I really wish that those people last night that gave testimony as the, the horrendous effect of these cuts have on, on their lives. I wish they'd have been here tonight. But I said last night, and I'll say it again today, that if these centres aren't reopened, I really hope that together we can take them up. We can take them up to the new council, introduce them to the councillors so that they can become well acquainted with the misery that they are responsible for. It's their duty to undo it. I hope that we can work with them. Possibly I won't be elected, so that opportunity won't be afforded to me. But maybe in the future it will. And that's really the point of our campaign, to put down a marker. And so, yes, we will, open those, we will reopen those centres, or we would, we will commit ourselves to supporting that, and I hope everybody in this room will too. And if you do, again, come and campaign for us in Seven Sisters. <laughs> Over 80% of those who were consulted said they didn't want daycare centres to close, um, and yet the council still closed them. Um, we would have looked to expand the daycare offer to attract more finance to make the daycare a viable option. Um, I've been told that the Haven, I've never been there, but I've been told that the Haven um, had a part of it that wasn't used at all, even though it had a brand new kitchen. Um, we warned care package costs would probably rise as people would need community-based services, which are often more expensive than daycare. Care package costs have risen, and yet officers tell us that they're not sure why. If closures had to happen, we would have listened to those consulted, ensured community provision was in, a place, was in place before any closures and set up working groups with clients and families to ensure the right provision was in place before any closure. And then 
revisited after three and six months to see um, if clients were happy uh, with any move. Thank you. So, um, I, I think um, if any of you have um, kind of known me over the past few years, and um, you, you will know that um, what I don't like is um, people um, kind of being asked questions or putting forward a proposal and not coming armed with the facts, actually. And that's why I will, I will challenge when people make um, um, incorrect claims and when people don't know the basic information about what the issues are that are at stake. And I, and I think, actually, the issue of the, the HDB is a testimony to that. So I think it's really, really important that when, when addressing issues like that, like what you're talking about, what I would say is... Um, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit further than saying read between the lines... Do, do I believe that we need to look again at day services? Yes. Do I believe that the majority of the, or all of the, of, of the candidates that are standing in the local elections on May the 3rd believe that? Yes, I do. So that is, for me, fact, and I will make you that promise, that actually, that is what I can say, that we all believe that this is something that needs to be looked again. You cannot make a decision at a certain point in time and actually say, that's in the past, we've made that decision, we will never look at it again. And that would be wrong. So that is the promise. I want you to leave with a promise from us that we can deliver. And, 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 and I will stick to that.